Taurus and welcome to 2023 year in review or breakdown of 2023 here on uh, Astro Energy. So what I'm going to do is break down New Year's Day's chart and then I'm going to do an extended reading for month by month for the year. And so we're going to get going with the reading. Um, Taurus actually hits the rising at 1.10 p.m. I'm in Orlando, so I did it to Orlando, which is an Eastern time zone. And what I'm going to do on this part of the reading is I will tell you all of the stuff that's going on in the chart, all the astrology. And then with the extended, I will give you more of a breakdown of transits and shifts and everything like that with the planets. So there will be kind of two different parts to this reading. New Year's Day, the chart is like a snapshot of that moment in time. And so it's aligned with Taurus on the horizon. And that puts a lot of energy in your ninth house of travel. And it is spiritual growth. Um, the ninth house really addresses where we seek to have more freedom, where we are seeking expansion and awareness. It is the higher education sector of the zodiac. And as I've said, it is spiritual growth. So with having had Pluto there for, you know, since 2018, it's 14 years, having Pluto been there since 2008 is a long time to really experience that shift of mentality, which is what Pluto does. It brings us an awareness to a deeper level of understanding that is psychological and it presents how we see our values, how other people value us as well. And it's the natural ruler of the eighth house of joint finances and commitment. So being in the next house with Capricorn, Capricorn really brings the strong energy of manifestation to that particular area of your chart. So you may have felt a strong push towards expansion in understanding with a new spiritual endeavor. So going to a new church or trying out a new religion, um, seeking out expanded consciousness through even uh, metaphysical means. And then also it's a shift and change of mentality, how you interact with people, especially people of culture, of other cultures, I mean, uh, foreign culture, how you seek out an understanding of that different culture, maybe grow your expression using uh, a training for a new language. And as Pluto is coming to the end of the time in that particular part of the sky, on New Year's Day, we also have Sun, and that little icon next to it is Vulcan. And Vulcan is actually technically an undiscovered planet. And as far as I know, I haven't heard that it has been discovered, but there is an anomaly in the sky that is assumed to be the planet Vulcan, which is the natural ruler of Virgo. And it has not been discovered as far as I know. So um, if you found that's not the case, please do let me know in the comments below. Uh, Mercury in Capricorn and Venus in Capricorn. So there's a stellium of Capricorn energy. This can kick the energy off to the other side, the Capricorn, or excuse me, the Cancer energy in your third house. So communications, but the long distance travel energy of this is really shoring up a, a system. And so if, if you potentially have flown or maybe have a job in the airline industry, uh, not surprising, I actually do have a Taurus friend who just recently got hired by an airline. So um, this is a potential for Taurus as well. But having that strong drive to travel is very distinct with these planets. Now, with Pluto, there is a shift and change. There has been, over the course of the time with Pluto in that particular house, uh, growth towards independence and autonomy. That's what we see as Pluto gets closer to the midheaven and the Aquarian energy, which comes in in March. So having uh, the, the idea that you no longer want to be the one responsible for everybody else and that you are really in a place to take ownership of your own story is really where we have headed with Pluto at end degrees Capricorn. And now that that is culminating with Mercury and Venus there this year, 
we are seeing um, much more of that energy coming about. You're making inroads into doing something about it. Venus brings forth a very strong desire to express your receptive energy, um, receptive meaning feminine, feminine energy allows, as opposed to masculine Mars, which is more of a driven actor, um, Venus desires and brings in that desire. And with Capricorn being the structural foundational energy, we are seeing this year come in with a very strong foundation towards the desire manifesting. Um, being that Venus is at your midheaven, that means that you're going to experience a shift around your career, the desire to change how you interact with the structure of your career is really strong. Uh, Venus will be going into Aquarius soon. Mercury will be going into Aquarius soon. And when that happens, of course, you're going to get triggered for more, even more independence because not only is the ninth house freedom, but Aquarius, which rules your 10th house, is career, but it's autonomy and really calling your own shots. Being that Saturn has been in that house for the last couple of years, Saturn at 22 Aquarius on New Year's Day shows that this year is going to be a year where you really do manifest more um, structure around an in individual um, entrepreneurial endeavor. And so Venus will also bring in women who uh, can help you with that endeavor, maybe someone who can give you more information about what you're trying to do. Mercury is also how we think of things. Now, Mercury is retrograde as of the 29th. And that means a late degree going back to early degrees of Capricorn. And so there's this evaluation and a reevaluation of thoughts and lists and organization that you've done in preparation for what you see as the vision coming in the near future. And I say near future, I mean March when Pluto moves into Aquarius. And then in the course of February, when Venus and Mercury will make their way into Aquarius. Um, so Mercury retrograde out of the gate this year is going to mean that this year is a time for evaluation, re-evaluation and redoing, reconstructing what you had in mind from um, the movements you're making, maybe even uh, growth and expression in a new place to live. That house, the ninth house, tends to be the ruler of real estate. So maybe you're rethinking where you're living or even the location in the world where you're at. So that's a pretty strong uh, force for the year, the Capricorn energy. And because it's in positive aspect to Taurus by trine, it means that it really does rule a shift in structure. And so you're going to find that the storyline, it is wrapping up, but you will have about five months later on in the year from May through October, mid-October, where you're really um, evaluating more of those structures and systems and having the, this year and next year as an opportunity to really uh, set in stone the direction you're heading and re-evaluate re what you have recently come to the conclusion of. Uh, maybe you're still kind of fine tuning that desire to move forward and take more independent action towards your career. You'll get the opportunity when Pluto is retrograde back in Capricorn through the end of the year, um, May through October, like I said. And then there is an aspect of in conjunct from the sun to Mars and Mars is in Gemini retrograde answering to Mercury, which is retrograde. So um, it's been said that two negatives make a positive. That could be true, but definitely the positive outcome from these two uh, planetary aspects are, well, first off, and in conjunct with Sun and Mars. Sun is ego. In Capricorn, it is how you feel you've taken care of the situation and acted responsibly. Mars and Gemini in the second house is focusing on money and double opportunities, dual energy, meaning you have two choices of how to make money or even potentially a, a love partnership. So there's something that has to be evaluated for a conclusion. Because it is the sun, the beginning of the year is sun in conjunct, there is going to definitely be an ego hit to the decision that you come to. And there's really no way to get around that. 
there's going to be a winner and a loser, so to speak, or someone who doesn't get their way and someone who does. So you're the one who's kind of in the driver's seat to really decide which one is the way to go. I would say currently with Mercury retrograding, you're going to be going to the past and evaluating what you had chosen. And if that is in fact a viable option, but Mercury, Mercury was drawn towards the future and then retrograded and went back to the past. But Mars retrograded and there was action taken forward. And then when Mars retrograded, it was like the brakes were put on and applied and the evaluation began. That being said, Mars goes direct January 12th. And when that happens, you're going to go full steam ahead. You will get a stronger drive towards the outcome. Mars wants to take action quickly. Jupiter now is in positive aspect to Mars energy. When Mars goes direct the second week of uh, January, it will be in sextile or positive cooperation with Jupiter. And Jupiter will answer to Mars. And then, of course, the first two weeks, Mars is answering to Mercury retrograde. And Mars itself is retrograde. So when Mars goes direct, in around the 21st of January, Mercury will also go direct. And so initially there will be a drive to move forward with Mars and want things to be culminated and finished off and a de decision made. There's a very strong chance action will be taken with the thought process kind of in the background, getting ready to fulfill after Mercury goes direct. So Mercury is really kind of getting the brain on board with what direction you are taking and what it is you want to do. Really going back and evaluating the systems and the foundation and the structure if it's sound, while Mars was really evaluating which choice you wanted to make. So the choice will be made after the 12th of January. And then Jupiter will cooperate with Mars to take action forward. And then Mercury will have another week to really evaluate and get on board with the details and the structure. So whatever the choice was, we'll probably be full speed ahead with the head and the heart by the last week of January. Um, Neptune, here we see Neptune at 22 degrees. It falls in your house of uh, networking and people associated with supporting your career choice with your life purpose. So this is like a soul group arena for your chart. You've got Vesta there. And you've got uh, Juno, which is marriage and uh, a commitment in marriage. Juno rules marriage. And so this will be a strong attraction towards marrying an ideal partner associated with your soul group and a new path, a new direction. It may even include a change of home. And so it's really triggering that deeper soul knowledge and wisdom on what direction to take. And it is in positive cooperation with the moon and Uranus in Taurus. So not only is Pisces in sextile to Taurus, it's also sextile to Capricorn. So there is a very strong um, aspect or groups of aspects going on here with this energy in your chart. And not to mention, you have a mystic rectangle going on between Capricorn and Taurus, Taurus and Cancer, and Cancer and Scorpio with the South Node, which is a node of fate, and then the North Node in Taurus. So there's some really strong energy going on here with this mystic rectangle. And the energies that are triggered are Mercury, South Node in Scorpio. Uh, the South Node is in um, a trine to Black Moon Lilith, which is a point in the sky that reflects the dark side of the moon and the um, energy of drive and choice around a particular issue. It is really um, a strong feminine assertion energy coming into play, as is Scorpio, because Scorpio is a feminine energy. It is energy of the past, and there is an energy going on. It's tri two trines and there is an opposition between the opposing energies and corners, but there are trines, sextiles, and oppositions all encompassed in this rectangle. And so the node of fate in Taurus, the moon conjunct the node of fate in Taurus, um, Vulcan, but also the sun and 
uh, Black Moon, Lilith, and the South Moon. All of these energies are combining to have a storyline around um, taking a moment in time and making a decision with the moon. The moon is a significator in orary astrology. It falls in Taurus, which is love and money. For you, it falls in your first house of identity. So there will absolutely be a decision making moment. And this is the structure of your love life and the structure of your finances, either or or combined. And then having Mercury and well, Vulcan, we're not going to talk about because I am not as familiar with Vulcan. I'm not addressing that, but the sun is the ego. So you have the sun, the light, the shining awareness in systems, in career, in travel, and a new place to live potentially, a commitment with the um, cooperation with the sun and the north node, and then springing down to black moon Lilith, which is the power behind the whole energy of these planets motivating forward. And then the south node in Scorpio, which again is a commitment, but it's in the house of marriage and partnership. So it is a moment of fate that revolves around money and the desire to commit or not commit or move forward with your person or a different person. And also, where are you going to land? What is the travel or the home life energy really looking like? And is the mind on board? It's a lot of intense energy this year, but it is a theme coming into 2023 for you. Um, finally, over here, we've got the energy of Jupiter and Chiron in Aries that falls in your 12th house of the subconscious. This is a really strong energy of moving forward for at least the first five months because Jupiter stays in your 12th house until May when it goes into Taurus. And so Jupiter is going to really trigger subliminal issues around having your own voice heard, being a cheerleader for your own agenda. It is a bit expressive. Um, I think little kids, and if they don't get their way, they can throw tantrums. You may feel um, behind the scenes that you just want to pout and throw a tantrum. And that's fair. I know a lot of reader, readers are talking about, well, if you have this aspect, then do this and calm yourself down and breathe and all this stuff. But there's a reason that you're upset. There's a reason the anger arises. And I want you to follow that thread. Take the anger, find out what is triggering you and feel the feelings, follow through with the feelings and know that those are there for a reason. They're helping you grow. Um, Jupiter is, like I said, in Aries. It's coming up on Chiron at, well, it won't be at 11 degrees when Chiron and Jupiter join. We'll discuss that in the extended reading. But Jupiter joining with Chiron is an energy of being wounded by men. So if you are living your life and having issues with men, there is a square of Aries to Capricorn. This year begins with that energy. Sun is going to trigger that wounding this year, 11, square 11. And so know that that is kind of a fate moment. 11 is the angel number. And so you're going to see the really strong, divinely guided friction between ego, which let's face it, um, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It rules the ego. And the sun as an entity in the sky is the center of our solar system. The ego is very strongly connected to that energy as well as Leo energy. So we're going to see this, you know, real e ego, egoistic, egotistical even energy coming out of us with Taurus rising, Taurus sun, Venus, Mars, Saturn. I pretty much take into account any strong bodies in the heavens that fall into Taurus um, if you have a strong Taurus aspect or Taurus planets, this can be listened to and associated with that part of your chart. Um, this is pretty much the rising energy or sun in Taurus, but the moon, because moon is also there at the beginning of the year, it's going to be a really strong influence for you this year. And moon represents home and hearth. And because we have Jupiter transiting your first also when it gets to Taurus and your 12th of the subconscious, it's going to be a strong energy around wanting to shift and change very large um, energies, including your home, including your spiritual growth. Um, Jupiter in your 12th house is subconscious, but it is taking more action towards um, even things like shamanism, 
or awakening to taking an action around some type of strong spiritual growth with psychics or metaphysical realm, um, some conscious sleep patterns, sleep cycles. Jupiter in Aries is expanding the head, head issues. Maybe you are thinking about a shift in hairstyle or a mindset. It is also looking at what makes you, what makes your drive motivated? How are you driven to do things the way you do this year? And then um, come May, when Jupiter goes into Taurus, that's going to really trigger some more um, financial and self-worth issues for you because it does rule personal value. Okay, um, that pretty much does it for the influences over the course of the year based on the new year chart. Uh, you will have all the other houses triggered, of course, with the moon going through those areas. So if you're interested in what the moon does for you, pick up a book on moon influences and you will see every sign as the moon goes through the different signs. I also have an ebook if you're interested. There will be a link at the end of this video. And that will also take you through each of the moons in different signs. But as the moons shift, the calendar for the moon every, for the course of the year will be really helpful for you um, to find out what influences you day to day, week to week, month to month with the moons. Um, I will touch on some of the moons in the extended reading. So if you're interested, go over to my Patreon page and the links for that are below as well. And I want to thank you for showing up and joining me. Um, oh, I think I, I didn't mention this real strongly, so I will right now. Uranus at 15 degrees, join with the moon, join with uh, conjunction to North Node in the first house. Again, it is another year of really strong attention to shift and change of identity. Um, Uranus is the unexpected. It is shift and change. Retrograde means it's going back over how you can be independent and autonomous throughout the year. It is about love and money, but it's also about agriculture and growing things, growing your own garden, getting into gardening, getting into beauty, getting into aesthetics, uh, decorating the home, doing interior design, doing um, food and food prep, what kind of foods go into your diet, really adjusting your diet with an alternate outlook for your diet. Um, Uranus brings in clarity. So there will be clarity around love, money, and diet and growing things. Um, so really, if you are interested in more intellectual growth, that's where the focus is for you, Taurus. And the moon is a culmination or an indicator of how that will come about. Moon between Uranus and the North Node is definitely going to bring in a shift and change of ideas and mentality and a shift of heart. Um, you may decide that there isn't a soul group connection, which Uranus also rules Aquarius, which is the ruler of the 11th house of soul group. And so there could be a shift and change of how you see your life and what the soul group does and gives you coming in. It is autonomy and independence and is a, a detachment from emotion. So there could also be a storyline around detaching from soul group and having more of a hermit energy or independent mind where you don't really take into account other people's opinions. Uh, that is all encompassed in that small little uh, territory in your first house. Okay, that really does do it. So I hope you have a wonderful year. Happy New Year. And hopefully we'll see you over at the extended reading on my Patreon page. Take care. Bye. Hi, this is Shelly. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.